What is going on internet? My name is Lou and I make Linux videos and I put them on the internet. Today's video is going to be a quick look at GNOME 3.10 which was just released a few days ago. I'm looking at it installed here in Ubuntu GNOME Beta 1. Uh, Ubuntu GNOME does not have the latest and greatest uh, iteration of GNOME so to get GNOME 3.10 you actually have to install a few PPAs. I'm not going to go over how to do that because I'm not really doing an Ubuntu GNOME uh, review today. I'm more or less looking at GNOME 3.10. So with that said, we'll come over here into details and I'll show you what we're working with. GNOME 3.10.0. Now I've been following the development of GNOME, GNOME Shell since its first iteration so I'm very very comfortable with the desktop environment and familiar with how it's progressed there's some things that I like about this new iteration and there's some things that I still think uh, could use some work so I'm gonna go over those things with you I'm gonna let you know the good the bad the ugly and this again is just my personal perspective things I like you may not and things that you don't like I may so just like anything else it's gonna come down to personal preference but let's just get started so web update actually has a very good article and they also have a video of some of the changes that you're gonna find in GNOME 3.10 so first and foremost uh, one of the things that still uh, exists in GNOME is I think of course it's trying to not completely go to touch you know if you read a lot of articles and, and documentations they still claim to be a very a u desktop um, mouse uh, you know point and click user interface however I can't ignore how many similarities especially GNOME 3.10 has with Android, specifically with Jelly Bean. And we're going to get uh, into that, and I'm going to show you what I mean. But one of the things that has been around now for the last few releases of GNOME has been these over exaggerated menus. And what do I mean by that? But if we click the date menu here, you've got this huge dialog box. Um, in my opinion, and now I have got a 27 inch LED monitor, it's 1920 by 1080 resolution. Uh, and even on a big monitor with a lot of real estate, this is just this menu is just awkwardly big it, it could be a lot smaller uh, especially to conserve for uh, for you know screen real estate it just gets in the way um, you could say the same thing about some of the other menus here um, over here where you see the power icon uh, this menu has been revamped I like the revision here of course you see my user account and I can log out if I want to you've got airplane mode in case you're on a laptop or even uh, you know if you're able to install this on a tablet of course you have your Wi-Fi controls I have my mi microphone controls and my sound I could power down the computer I could restart the computer or I could go right into settings settings has seen some revisions web update actually brings out uh, the point where we have these new header bars and by header bars you can see up here right at the very top of the settings uh, dialog you see this magnifying glass uh, this allows you to type in a setting and kind of really narrow it down. We can go directly into our sound settings that way or go back. And then it hides itself again with a click. I do like that. I think it's a good use of space. And this comes in handy when you're searching uh, through a lot of files. For instance, my music. Uh, I'm, it's able to allow me to search my music uh, really, really nicely. So I do like that. We have a new background setting. So from here, we can change our desktop background as well as the lock screen background with these two nice dialogues that is very nice I do like that as well notifications you can control what notifications are displayed both in pop-up banners as well as on the lock screen now this is one of the areas that this uh, gnome shell interface is starting to really remind me of Android in a good way of course um, so I'm gonna play you guys a quick song and I'm gonna show you what I mean by that so let's go down to rhythm box here and we'll start a song. Now I'm going to go out to the lock screen. And as you can see here on the lock screen now, we have displayed both the time, the day of the week, the date, and the controls for our music. So I can pause the track or I can skip the track. Uh, to get back, we simply swipe up, supply our password, and we're back in again. So I really like that uh, sound notification 
um, accessible directly on the lock screen. That is very, very nice. I like that. Of course, you have online accounts, which you can uh, hook up your online accounts, such as Gmail and Facebook. We also have a new display setting. I only have one monitor hooked up, but this is a nice uh, change to the display setting. Also, date and time has been revamped. And if we come back out here, uh, you notice here the dash is what is uh, commonly referred to as this dock-like um, addition here on the side where you can store fav uh, shortcut favorites and so on. Um, even down to this little show application icon, if you use vanilla Android, uh, this is almost identical to the icon that is usually uh, used to access your app drawer. Now also on that Android queue, instead of just a drawer, you get these pa these pages that uh, you can control with this pa these paginated icons here on the side. So when I scroll down with my mouse once, it scrolls down a page. Again, very mobile-esque in the way that it works. So no more drawer, it's pages. Very, very similar to Android once again. And you also have these um, folders or drawers very similar to what again Android uses to help categorize your applications now I guess in a way that this is good um, if you're using a desktop with all of the real estate such as a huge monitor like this it's almost annoying having to go into these drawers for certain things so uh, this is something personally I would never use um, I'm not on a small mobile uh, device where the screen real estate um, you need to be sparing with. I'm on a big monitor. Uh, I can have all my icons. Um, I can afford to have them all laid out. It's actually easier for me to um, search through them that way. Um, again, with the over-exaggerated UI, you've got this huge dash over here on the side. It's almost silly if you, you're using a desktop uh, with a mouse and keyboard to have something this big. It's just unnecessary. Um, your frequently used applications, when you enter your dash, is going to be actually your show applications uh, your most frequently used is going to actually show up here first uh, in the search results you can actually bring up web results as well tweak tools been revamped there's a lot of new options here in the gnome tweak tool I've got a lot of extensions here installed I have tweaked the fonts. Uh, I think that the standard setting, the fonts are way too big. Startup applications has been added to the GNOME tweak tool. You've got some custom applications. Now I don't have all of them installed, but GNOME has released some custom applications. Some of which people are going really crazy over, such as weather. It's a simple weather app. It just displays the weather. Um, nothing crazy. People are going nuts over it. Um, if you're really into weather that much, you've got your own application now. They have a new notes application here as well. This is a, a pretty nice basic app. I like the fact that GNOME is, is developing new applications and refreshing old ones. Um, there's some preview applications actually, and Web Update does talk about those. There's no music, there's no maps, and there's no software. Gnome software is just like the Ubuntu Software Center. You've got no maps, which is obviously a fairly self-explanatory application. It's a map app, and you've got no music. Um, no music does look pretty good. I like very simple music applications. Um, you know, so I, I do like that. Uh, out of all of the desktop environments, Gnome Shell still to this day is my favorite in terms of multitasking. I love being able to hit the super key. Um, start typing the name of an app, hit enter, and bring it right up. I think it does it very fluidly, uh, and it is very, very nice. The dynamic workspaces, I still enjoy those. There is a bug with Firefox. If you have multiple Firefox windows open, uh, it does not show them all. Uh, so that is a bug there. Uh, one of my other little gripes is notifications. Now, with GNOME Shell going in the direction that it is, incorporating online accounts, um, your empathy uh, accounts as well. I really like how notifications worked in the very very first iteration of GNOME Shell. There would be a semi-transparent bar down here at the bottom and in your bottom right hand corner there were some icons for things like Dropbox and so on. You know if you were chatting uh, you know using any of the you know say uh, Gchat or, or Facebook or what have you there'd be a nice um, modal dialog box that would pop up here down at the bottom and you'd be able to actually you know I interact with the chat right through the GNOME Shell interface. 
Um, and I really, really like that. Now the way to access notifications, they're actually hidden. So uh, you do this with a pressure gesture. And what that means is if you drag your mouse down to the bottom and continue to drag it as if you were to add pressure, it's going to expose your notifications. Again, here's those over-exaggerated UI elements. Um, these icons are just huge. They, in my opinion, look awful. They're obviously geared towards someone using a touch interface, so they're just big enough for you to place your finger on um, and be able to interact with the desktop. Again, I find it. Uh, I find there's a lot of irony. Irony in that. 99% of people are using a GNOME shell on a desktop or on a laptop and they're probably not using it on a touch device yet you've got so many um, parts of the desktop environment catered to uh, touch obviously catered to touch um, when the majority of users are probably not using it uh, on a touch interface I do understand that touch is kind of going to the future and it's the way things are moving but I think that there's so much of it geared toward touch it's almost a little bit ridiculous considering the majority of people are using this on a point-and-click um, desktop or even on a laptop and more so on a laptop if you don't have a touch enabled laptop I mean again I have a huge monitor all of these things are gonna take up serious parts of your real estate and I just think it's a, a bit ridiculous I would love to see these things to be able to be scaled down and I'm sure there's extensions that are uh, I'm going to allow you to do that. However, what I don't like with extensions is every time GNOME Shell seems to get updated, your extensions break the shell. So I would love to see this incorporated into the UI by default. And I think that that's something very simple that the GNOME developers could add in, maybe in GNOME settings, to be able to control the size of these different elements of the interface. That way, you can really customize it. If you're on a desktop, you can shrink them down. If you're on a touch interface or a tablet, you can increase their size. Um, little tweaks like that, what I think would make GNOME Shell a lot more usable. In terms of speed, it is very, very quick. I am using the Novu driver, the open source driver. I'm also using Linux kernel 3.11. Whoops. Uh, 3.11.1. I'm sure that uh, I would get better performance out of Linux kernel 3.12. It's got a lot more enhancements in terms of the Novu driver, the open source NVIDIA driver. Uh, I do get some screen checkerboarding and a little bit of video tearing here using the open source driver. I had the proprietary NVIDIA driver installed, however, um, when I try to do a screen capture, there's a lot of blue flickering that my screen goes through and uh, a lot of issues with screen capture. So I had to uninstall it for the sake of making this particular video. Um, but, you know, as you can see, GNOME Shell, for those of you who have used it, looks very, very similar. Um, here's that bug again with Firefox. Firefox is obviously open. I have multiple instances of it, but you cannot see it here in the workspace overview. That's been a bug that's been around forever. Um, let's see. Anything else really worth mentioning? You've got some Wayland support that's um, been introduced as well. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Um, there's been you know some enhancements to the web browser, uh, which they're referring to as simply web. I like some things about this new release, and there are things I really, really don't like. This is going to be, again, something really corny that's more of a, a user preference, but you cannot add transparency. At least I haven't found a way to add transparency to the terminal. I'm sure I can open up G settings and, and find a, uh, a setting for it, but as of right now, all you can have is a solid ter uh, terminal. I like a semi-transparent terminal. Again, that's just a minor UI uh, theme preference. But this is just a brief look at GNOME 3.10. I like the more expanded um, dialogues here that you get by default. I like the extra options. I still think that these over exaggerated sizes of everything is just ridiculous. I think they really need to scale those down or give us an option to do so. I think the the fact that they're developing their own applications which adds consistency to the look and feel of the desktop environment is really good. You know, I think that elementary is doing the same thing. I like that a lot. And of course, there's been talk about a GNOME 
uh, distro. So we'll see how that goes. This is GNOME 3.10. I believe it's better than 3.8 because I thought 3.8 was horrible. Uh, is it something I would use on, a, on uh, my day-to-day -day use as a daily driver? Probably not. We'll see in another six months what goes on with GNOME 3.12. Um, but as of right now, it's nothing that I would use in my day-to-day -day work, which is a shame again because I rather enjoy a lot of features from GNOME Shell. I just, some things I just can't get past. Um, but this is it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed my personal review of GNOME 3.10. Leave a comment in the comment section below. What features do you like best? What features do you like least? Do you even use GNOME Shell? Um, and until next time, guys, I appreciate you watching, and we'll catch you later.